So it's 2025 and AI is all over the place. And like it or not, if you haven't picked up on any AI tools up until now, you are being left behind. I wanted to make a quick little video showing how I use AI tools to make certain shots in this documentary that I made. So stick up until the end because I show how I made my favorite shot in this artist spotlight and I don't want to spoil it. And the tools that I mentioned in this video aren't sponsored. So these are tools that I actually find useful. And before we hop in, if you want to dive really deep into how to use AI to your best of your advantage as a content creator, I co-created an AI course. I'll have it linked below and I'll talk more about it at the end, but let's hop right into me showing the tools. So I made this six or so minute documentary featuring an artist called Benjamin Nock. And there were a few shots in there that I had to use AI. I captured quite a few shots in Tokyo. Then I used some shots supplied by the artist. But then there's some shots that I wouldn't be able to get through stock footage, either from the artist supplying it or me shooting it myself. So in this artist piece, I actually had four total shots using AI. And let's actually hop into this first shot right here. So I need a shot of someone knocking on a door. And the way I was able to get that shot was with chat GPT images and by using the right prompt, such as instructing the specific aspect ratio and style, you can get a shot that is pretty convincing. Then from there, I brought it into an AI suite called FreePick. And what I really like about FreePick is that if you're not sure which AI platform you want to commit to, they pretty much have the majority of AI models under one subscription. So you're able just to play around with all these different models and experiment and see which one you like the most. Like right here, we can go into video editor and you can see all these models that we can pick from. Once again, this isn't sponsored. I just find this tool super cool because we get stuff like VO3 as well as Kling. I don't have subscriptions for either of these platforms, but because I have free pick, now I do have access to it. But as for the actual video that I took from ChatGPT images, I just placed it into FreePick. I fed it also a simple prompt and I used Seed Dance 1.0 Pro, which is a very inexpensive, but also high fidelity AI model. By the time you're watching this video, because AI is growing so fast, it might be VO4 or some other video model such as like Sora 2, which, you know, I mean, OpenAI, come on, it's taking a little bit of time for that to come out. But I took this and because it was in low resolution, the one thing I also like about FreePick is in their suite, they have a video upscaler. So you could just drag and drop that video and take it from, I believe the 360p video and blow it up to 4K, which is what I like to use for my content. Just one more quick thing that I did use FreePick for was upscaling an image. I had a screenshot that I pulled from the website of the finished mural that Benjamin was painting. It did have a lot of JPEG artifacts, but once I did bring it in into FreePick, it just cleaned up the whole image for me very nicely. So that's the workflow for the first shot. And here's the second shot. Made this realistic to the context of the documentary because he was in a treehouse next to a volcano. The background is Mount Yasur in Vanuatu. And I also generated this image in ChatGPT as well. I simply used a reference shot and then I plugged it in with quite a lengthy prompt to make sure I had it exactly the way I wanted. And it spit out this, which I really liked. Now the next tool I want to show that I used to bring this still image to life, I took the image from ChatGPT and plugged it into Runway. I did experiment a few times. I had to do like four iterations to get it right. I used Gen 4, then Gen 4 Turbo, and then I upscaled, but I do like to play around with legacy models as well in runway such as Gen 3, but by the time you're watching this video, Gen 5 might be out. I don't have any insider information or anything. It's just the way how quick AI is moving now. But here was the finished shot and with the same situation as with Seed Dance inside FreePick, it was at a lower resolution. So you just upscale it to 4K and then I had the 4K shot from there, added some motion graphics text on top and then I had the finished shot. Next up, this shot was a little bit tricky. It was a team of eight people from the Earthquake Research Center at Tokyo University who wanted to collaborate. I did use several tools to bring this into reality. So pretty much the majority of these shots, I started with ChatGPT to create an image and I actually included references 
which was a shot that I actually scrapped because I got the real world footage of. And then also the hand knocking to kind of get the similar vibe. I wanted a shot with eight scientists and pretty much I just describe it in a prompt what I wanted exactly. I went through a few iterations of this and it didn't quite get the number of scientists right each time, but I had to do a few iterations to get it right. And then I finally landed on this shot, which I liked. So this shot was the first iteration right here, but you can see that we are seeing some artifacts in the scientists here. So I wanted it a little bit higher fidelity. So I hopped back into runway. And as I mentioned before, I like to experiment with legacy models. So simply what I did is I did a style transfer to make things more realistic. So I dropped the video footage into Gen 3 Alpha and just reprocessed it. This is what Gen 3 Alpha really does shine at. If you just want the video to be slightly restyled. I did have to do quite a few attempts and some negative prompting because they, they did come out with gloves and they were scientists, not doctors. Like they had all these steth stethoscopes and everything. But after a bit of prompting, I was able to get it right. And this is what I landed on. Here's the final one. And you can see how much higher fidelity this has just by running it across a different AI tool. And that's like a pro tip. You don't need to stick to one AI platform. So you could take that image from ChatGPT, and then you could take that image and generate it in one AI platform, which is actually the one I'm going to show next. And then take that output and then drop it into a, a different AI platform, such as Runway to change the style of it. And with this iteration, you can really refine things. This was the final shot uh, that was processed in Runway. And then I upscaled it in Runway. And that's shot number three. Now, as for the final shot, which I did say for last because it is my favorite shot. And the process for this one was a little bit different because I used a real life image and then I put it in a platform that we haven't talked about yet, but is a really great platform for beginners. And that is Higgs field. You can see I actually used Higgs field for some shots that didn't make the cut, but I simply inputted an image of Tokyo that I found online. And then one thing that's cool about Higgs field are these presets and you can look through them yourself and it just pretty much makes it so that you get preset AI effects that are very seamless and consistent. So I used a sandstorm and a dolly out because I really wanted to depict the effect of pretty much Tokyo being covered in ash from a volcanic eruption. And then these AI platforms on top of that, they also do write prompts for you based on what they think you want the output to be. So I believe it did write a prompt for me as well, as you can see here, which is quite long. And I took this finished video and brought it back into free pick and upscale. And that's pretty much it. I wanted to make this video as lean as possible. And I hope this video can give you some inspiration on how you can use AI to level up your content, especially where you need shots that wouldn't be able to be produced with conventional ways. And I wanted to give a quick moment just to mention what this AI content creator course is all about. Not only are you going to learn how to generate videos like these, I don't specifically go over all of these exact platforms. Rather, it's the methodology of prompting, which is something I just briefly showed in this video. But in the course, you learn actually the way to write prompts the right way. It's an eight module masterclass that goes over all the fundamentals of getting started with AI for content creation, not just image generation and making videos with it, but also the ideation side of creating content. I left the link below for that. There are a few early bird discounts still available. If you're the type of person that's interested in art, technology, and whatever's at the intersection of that, be sure to follow me. I post stuff that's about my art. I also post about other people's art and current event stuff. Pretty much if you like art, just follow me. But that being said, I hope to see you in the next video. Be sure to share, like, comment, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.